This is question one from paper 4-1 from the June 2020 exams from Cambridge International. This is a mechanics paper. Up the top right of the screen, you'll find a card that will bring you to the playlist that has all my solutions to the questions in this paper. And below the video, you can find a link to an image of this question. So you can look at it before, you can try it before looking at my solution. In this question, they give us three vectors here to represent three forces. And they ask us to find the magnitude of the resultant force and what direction it's in. And we could do this by breaking up each of these forces into, really you can go any direction, but sta as standard we move, break them all up into forces that go up and down in the vertical direction and left and right in the horizontal direction. And then we just simply add them together. Two forces going to the right, we add them together and, and get one bigger force and so on. One force up, one force down, they take away from each other. So let's break them up. This 100 Newton force to the left, it's already in a nice flat um, x direction or minus x direction. So we'll leave that alone and we'll break up this one here. I'll do the top one in red um, and we'll break it up into two forces. Sorry, I should do it like this. Uh, one arrow this way and one arrow here this way. So this 50 Newtons force, we could say instead of going up this way, we could say some of it's going up and some of it's going right. So we do that by um, drawing a triangle pretty much. We break it up into this triangle here, this alpha triangle. And this length here, we represent this vector and we'll say it's 50 long. It's a way to, its magnitude is 50 pretty much. So I really just want to know, I want a vector that's here, but really this is, will be the same, same as a vector here. Remember a vector doesn't matter where it starts or ends. All that matters is its magnitude and direction. So really, I just want to know what uh, height this is. What's the magnitude of this? I can see the directions up. I just want to know the magnitude of this. So we just have a right angle triangle, really. So this would be, um, uh, sine would tell us this one. So let's see, sine alpha would equal this here. Let's call this y and this x would equal y divided by 50, or to rearrange that, we'd get y is equal, y is equal to 50 sine alpha. And again for x, the one that's more important to us here, we'd get x is equal, if we did something similar, x is equal to 50 cosine alpha. So I'll go ahead and put that in. Um, let's see, this one up here was 50 sine alpha, and this one here will be 50 cosine alpha alpha and we do the same i'll do this one in blue it doesn't show up quite as well a vector going this way and one on the same path as this one going this way so this one coming down if we do something very similar we'll just get 50 uh 50 sine alpha and this one here will just come out as 50 cosine now, um, you wouldn't necessarily need to do these two. You could have said from the start that these are symmetrical. Because what we can now see is all the, all the vectors that go up minus all the vectors that go down, they cancel. They're the same vector. This goes push, pulls up, this one pulls down, and they pull the same amount. So they disappear. Our final answer at the end will have no vectors going up or down. And we can see that from the first question. If you look at the first question, this one goes, pulls up this way 50, pulls down this way 50. You would expect, if these angles are the same, for it to have no resultant force up or down. So our final answer will, the, all the vectors left will be 100. Sorry, it's not our final answer, my bad. And then all the vectors right, let's see, we broke this one into a 50 cosine alpha, and we broke this one into another 50 cosine alpha. What we're left with here is two of them, two times 50 cosine alpha. And this is where the question was helpful to us. They told us what cosine alpha was equal to. They could have told us what alpha was equal to. It would have been the same thing. So we put both of these in. Um, yeah, let me just uh, write it underneath here. We'll get 100 times cosine alpha. That'll be 400 divided by five, which is 80. We will get 80 Newtons going this way, 100 Newtons going this way. Let's add them together. If you pull 100 this way and 80 this way, what you're really left with is pulling 20 um, this way. And that's the answer to the question. The magnitude of this vector will be 20, 
and the direction will be in the minus x direction. You could go ahead and write something like that. Mag is equal to 20, direction is um, left would be fine. Direction would be minus x, that would be okay as well. You could maybe leave your answer as minus 20, but I don't think so. I don't think they would like that as an answer. It does tell me the magnitude is 20 and the direction is left, but they, they ask for magnitude on its own, so I think it's important you tell them the magnitude is 20. This would be full marks here, magnitude 20, direction left. That would be perfectly acceptable. If you draw the picture as well, they'll probably give you full marks straight away as well. But if you didn't draw the picture, this would be okay. Right, I hope that answers um, that question. If you have any follow-up questions about it, put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to clarify any mistakes I made or anything I was unclear on. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.